Hi there, and welcome to the fourth episode of me working on my 1989 Toyota pickup. This week we will be continuing our work on the cylinder heads. I spent this week figuring out the process of cutting and lapping the cylinder head valves so they pass the gas leak test. I finished with one of the cylinder heads and in this video I'll be showing you that process in the second cylinder head. I will also show you how I cleaned up the surface that will mate with the head gaskets as well as cleaning the surface on the exhaust ports and the top of the cylinder heads for the valve cover. To start the process, I went to a local engineering company that manufactures machines that work in the countertop industry and asked if they had any cutoffs from their testing department. I was expecting an 8 inch by 8 inch random cutoff that was half broken on one side and they blew my expectations out of water by getting me what looks like the cutout of a sink. I've already measured it. It's extremely flat. There's no dip. There's no cups in it. It's a great surface that I figured I could use to, to clean up the surface of the cylinder head that mates with the head gasket. I'm using two 500 grit pieces of sandpaper and I'm gluing them to the surface. After the sandpaper has set, I spread a thin layer of Carnova wax over the surface the main purpose of adding the wax is to let the surface slide easily back and forth without inhibiting the sanding properties of the process. Using oil, just let the head slide around everywhere without actually grinding anything off. This is about as good as I can get it with this process. It looks very similar to the first head I did. If I try to take any more off, I risk changing the angle between the head gasket surface and the surface that the uh, stud nuts will sit on. And I don't want to risk that. Um, so I'm going to call it done here. The other one looks pretty much exactly the same. I measured that one with uh, a dial indicator across the surface. And I have about five thou difference from one side to the other one. Before I did this one, I measured it. I was about five to three thou off on this one, so I'm not gonna say I've done anything detrimental to the surface, so I'm gonna call that good. Um, now I'm gonna give the surface for the valve cap a quick pass. I don't wanna take too much because that starts changing the bearing surface for the cam, and I don't wanna do anything to that. And then a couple passes on the exhaust side, just clean it up, and I will call this process done. Now that I am happy with all of the external surfaces, it's time to start the process of cutting and lapping all of the valves. Like I said earlier in the video, I've been working on this process all week. I have one cylinder head done, so I'm just going to do one step at a time on all the valves and get the second head knocked out. I realized I could have taken these heads to a machine shop and have all of this uh, professionally done, 
But like I said before, this is not the purpose of this engine. Uh, the purpose of this engine is for me to get hands on, do everything myself, and really just kind of get in there and figure out what it takes to rebuild an engine. I do spend a lot of time researching the processes and the go, no go of each of the steps that I'm doing. And if I come up with a process that meets those requirements, I am perfectly happy with the process that I've come up with. So we'll get into doing all the valve work now, um, go through the process of what I've done to cut, uh, what I've done to lap, also using processes that I've read about online, slightly modified for not pushing them beyond what I think is technically allowable, but an easier way to do a process. The first step is kissing all of the surfaces with a valve cutting tool. Um, one thing I've learned with this particular setup is the surfaces need to be dry. Don't use lubrication. Go slow and just make sure that the shaft is lubricated inside the valve guide. Trying to use oil, cutting fluid, or anything like that really just kind of keeps the cutter from doing its job. So I'll go through and I'll just kiss every single one of these. Make sure there are no indents or low spots as well. Um, so I'm going to go through and do all of those. Because this particular cutter is slightly smaller than the intake valves, it leaves a very slight raised part on the edge. Um, so now I need to go through with a slightly larger cutter um, and it has a different angle on the flutes. So I don't mess up the existing head, but I kind of take off that little edge. And with that, the valves are ready for lapping. Hopefully you can pick up on the camera how there's a very nice shiny surface. I've hoped this itself is enough to pass the gas leak test, but it isn't. Um, every time I've just tried to do this stuff on the first head, the valves end up leaking. I'm going to go through and hand lap all of the valves. Um, and it's not exactly hand lapping. It's easier to do it with a drill on the stem side because the suction cup lapping tool do not stick to the valves that I have because there are raised letters that doesn't allow the suction cup. So this is kind of like a modified hand lapping job. It's worked really well for me so far, so I'm gonna do it to all these. <music> Now that I've done lapping, what I'm looking for is that dullness around the entire surface. And if it's shiny anywhere, that means that that's a low spot in the valve seat, which hasn't been lapped. That means that gas can leak. This first one looks really good, except for there's one little spot right here at the bottom of the valve in relation to where the exhaust is that is shiny. So. We're gonna give it a go. We're gonna put the spring back on and we're going to do a gas leak test. Initially, I'm gonna fill it up as little as I can. And if it leaks out of the bottom, I know that that was a leak problem.
before I do the leak test, I'm gonna give you an explanation of what it is. I'm gonna pour gas into the back of the exhaust port and it's gonna rest against the back of the exhaust valve. And if everything's okay, in roughly 10 to 15 seconds, you might see some gas pooling down here. And I've considered that acceptable. But if it's any quicker than that, that means that this process has failed. So just a splash, a little bit more of a splash. There, we are about halfway full and there is no liquid coming out. It's full all the way and we'll just sit and wait. I'm gonna move the light and you can see that while this finger is beat up, it is dry. I'm gonna run my hand along here. The tip of it is dry. I'm gonna stick it in the valve. And that's what it looks like wet. So that valve passes. I'm going to set the camera up and just knock out the rest of the valves one at a time. We got five more to go, and then I am done with the valve work. I would say that was quite a productive session. I did have one hiccup. I've got all of the valves cut, lapped, and they all pass the gas leak test except for one. Well, hopefully I can show you on this. But on this valve, you can see like the lapping line. If you rotate it, it disappears. If you get more rotated, it comes back. Because there's that stop in the lapping groove, that means the valve's bent. And you can see it in the head when you're spinning it that it's doing this. So that's all I can do for the valve job at this point. I'm gonna get a replacement valve on order, finish this up during the week. That way we can move on. I think that'll be it for this week. Next week we will finish with the preparation of the heads and then move on to the next steps of the rebuild. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.